for coming to our talk. So I'm gonna be talking, or we're gonna be talking about the National Map Corps Emergency Response Project that we did last year. And so what this project was, was a project that FEMA asked us to help them with to collect some data to respond to the flooding in Louisiana um, last August and September. So I'll give you a little context about why we're here talking about this. Um, so the National Map Corps is a program at the USGS that is a crowdsourcing program similar to OpenStreetMap but a much lim more limited scope. Um, and so volunteers can use our online application um, to update structures data, uh, which are point features, building features, in all 50 states, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And that data updates the national map and U.S. topo map, which are public domain, um, downloadable, free, to, free products that we provide. And so initially, uh, when we started this project about seven years ago, uh, we looked into working with OpenStreetMap. So we were in contact with OpenStreetMap folks. And ultimately, we weren't able to work directly with OpenStreetMap because of a license um, conflict. So since we have a public domain license, um, we can't provide OpenStreetMap data. Um, however, at that time, we did customize um, a, a version of Potlatch 2. So we downloaded uh, the OSM software stack and customized a version of Potlatch 2 for our project, which was amazing. Um, this project wouldn't have happened if that hadn't been available to us. Um, and so we've since moved just about a year ago to uh, an internally developed editor. But for this project, when FEMA contacted us, we had just retired our customized version of Potlatch 2, which was a, a dinosaur by that point. I'm sure you all are like, what? Potlatch 2? What are you doing? Um, and so the reason we were able to help FEMA with this project is because we had just retired that, so we were able to prop it back up um, and customize it again to use it for this project. So that's some background. Uh, so again, in August 2016, FEMA contacted us. They were responding to the flooding in Louisiana, and they did not have parcel data um, for a number of parishes. And so what they needed this data for was to speed um, disaster relief to citizens. So what they needed to do was figure out where homes were that may have been damaged. So we determined if we would be able to do this. Um, and they had contacted us because they were aware of our volunteer program, the National Map Corps. Um, and so we determined that we could move forward and try to help them with this process. So again, they requested that we solicit our volunteers to collect um, building data over six parishes that lack data. And the data collection was meant for planning, future mitigation, and to also, again, help speed relief to citizens, so identify where people may be located that need assistance, financial assistance from FEMA. Um, so I kind of already talked about this, but again, what we did was we stood up our recently retired um, version of Potlatch 2. And so that had been cloned from OpenStreetMap in 2010, 2011. Um, and this is just the framework we were using. So um, Ruby on Rails 3, uh, the home page was Leaflet. And again, it was the, the Potlatch 2 editor. So we quickly, they asked us if we could do it. and. Um, just in like a couple days, a small team of us created user documentation and we invited our, an experienced group of our volunteers that we knew we wouldn't need to train to um, participate in this process of placing points on buildings by type. And um, daily we provided that data um, to FEMA. So this is just a view of what the editor looked like. So again, it's Potlatch 2 customized really simple, and again, all we were collecting was all buildings by type, so residential, large outbuilding, commercial, or other, um, across these six parishes. I already mentioned this, we created a quick user guide, um, and we only invited a limited subset, and that was to improve the results. We've, you know, we have, we know our community well, and we've, um, you know, looked into the quality of the data and published that and they provide really high quality data. So it was something we needed to turn around quickly and provide to FEMA as quickly as possible. 
I already mentioned this. These are the features we collected. Um, so this is kind of the timeline. Greg, do you want to go over this, or you want me to go over it? OK, cool. Uh, so the, the point of this slide is um, not all of the details here, but that we took a bit uh, about one week to discuss this internally uh, with FEMA and staff and decide if we could actually pull this off in our spare time um, with about three staff working on it part time. Um, so after that week, we initiated the implementation with this uh, shelved piece of software. And we spent the next four weeks collecting data with the volunteer community. Uh, we didn't really know what to expect because, you know, we'd been doing this for years, uh, but not for this kind of data collection. Um, so we didn't know exactly what to expect. And, and so it, this was an exercise for us to, to find out, number one, if we could work uh, kind of cross-governmental agency with FEMA, which I don't think had ever been done before with a crowdsourcing project like this, uh, within the government, that is, and then also work with the public at the same time. Uh, and do a very rapid iteration, uh, only a month's worth of data, and if this would be successful or not. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. And this is the histogram uh, showing the data that was collected over time, and you can kind of see how it ramped up very quickly and began to taper off over time as, as areas to uh, contribute were harder and harder to find. The map became saturated over the over a period of, month, of, of the month. So, um, it, it was tapering off towards the end of, end of the project. It also gave us kind of an indication that it was probably a good time to wrap up. Plus, we had a hard deadline from FEMA as well. Uh, it's, it's just another kind of interesting thing is for some reason, you know, we don't know the exact profile of our volunteers because it's, we can't collect personally identifiable information from the public because we're the government. It's just we can't do that. So, um, but for whatever reason, we were finding um, most of the data was being collected like early in the week rather than the weekends, which was a little bit surprising. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do that on a Monday, but that's what was happening. Yeah. Uh, th this is uh, just a, a slide, kind of just a window into how we were trying to manage some of the, the areas internally. We got this off the ground really fast, and this is kind of an afterthought we needed to. We decided to implement uh, an online um, spreadsheet so that people could report areas that were comp that were finished, uh, so that we you know could help retask other volunteers. And this is the visual display of of uh, that tracking. So the orange areas were areas that were marked as complete uh, parishes, while the blue were not complete. But again, we had that hard deadline after a month uh, with FEMA, so we had to wrap it up anyway. Okay, sorry for the garbled slides here. Thanks, Mac. <laughs> okay, so um, some of the results from the collaboration. Uh, crowdsourcing allowed the USGS to collect a lot of data in a short amount of time. The distributed effort um, was proven to be successful in our experience. Uh, staff estimates estimates that a point could take a volunteer between 30 seconds and one minute to collect. That was based off of our personal experience because we were also collecting data in the system. Um, so the result, the resulting effort was between 65 and 131 eight-hour days worth of work. Uh, that's fairly significant for us. Um, we successfully uh, provided data where FEMA had none, which was uh, great. We were really glad to, to help serve FEMA in this way. Uh, it supported future planning for FEMA. Uh, supported FEMA to provide disaster assistance in the areas, and FEMA USGS collaboration helped FEMA to create a common operating picture and to respond to this emergency. So the, the map that you're looking at is just a heat map showing uh, areas that uh, where people were basically filing claims uh, after the fact in the areas that we were mapping. Um, so the lessons learned, the USGS uh, was able to rely on the proven crowdsourcing capabilities again. I think, you know, we had done six years of crowdsourcing prior to this. Uh, and so these results were consistent with our other results of uh, kind of non-emergency, non-crisis mapping. Uh, the response from National Map Corps volunteers was very excellent. We have a great community of users. Uh, we had, uh, we were able to deploy this really rapidly, but we, 
weren't able to plan ahead for this because FEMA just kind of called us out of the blue. Uh, Chris Vaughn is who we were working with. And so it was very hard on staff. I think we had three, three people working on this, Aaron and I and uh, Joe Pantoga. Uh, and so it was a lot to do in a really short amount of time. Um, I think the USGS could be interested in something like this in the future if we were to able to plan ahead and stage an application like this and have it ready to go. Uh, I think that could be something that could be extremely successful. Um, Another lesson learned is that we really needed a small grid system uh, to check off where work is complete. We didn't have a small one, we had a large one. That was really unfortunate. Uh, another thing is probably a tasking manager. Um, that may seem silly, like looking at that after the fact, because of course we would need a tasking manager to do this kind of work. Um, for long-term efforts, it would be good uh, to align uh, FEMA or other organizations' goals with the USGS. Ultimately. I think this was a really good lesson for us and it kind of shows a great way for government to work with other government agencies and the public at the same time. Um, but ultimately we couldn't, USGS couldn't use this data so um, to make something like this sustainable we would need to, to have a data collection that worked for more than one agency because we can't just use building level data for our mapping. And. With that, that is it. Any questions, comments, nice comments? So what would be required to, to build a, to pre-build for the next event? You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you can jump in too. Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't take a lot. We have developed our own internal application, uh, that's part open source, part Esri, and uh, it's really just a, an issue of capacity because we have probably ninety percent of the solution in place now, and so we're just so overwhelmed in the in the federal government right now. We have a lot of great ideas and a lot of work to do, but that like extra ten percent, we can't bridge the gap. It takes. It take a. Uh, we have to we plan out a year ahead of time too, so it wouldn't take a lot of work, but it it's, would be hard to get done, honestly. So, any other questions, comments? Uh, just a few minutes remaining. How do how does one become a member or a contributor to the Map Core? Oh, I, I've, I, uh, if you want to do this and OpenStreetMap, I encourage it. It's, uh, so you, if you go to um, nationalmap.gov, you'll see the National Map Core from that homepage. So it's really easy. You just sign up, email, use, uh, username, that's all, and start contributing. And again, our scope is really limited, but the data we collect is public domain and does update our products. So it's an important resource. At this time, again, we only collect buildings. Um, with really simple attribution and point features, so. But check it out. I brought some bookmarks and I forgot them at home, so sorry. Next time. Let me ask a quick question to the audience. Has anybody been involved in National Map Corps in the past? You? Jimmy, of course. Jimmy helped build the system. Thanks, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Jerry, thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, so just a quick reminder, thank you for your presentation.